Morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. I want to begin by recognizing that even though it's Saturday, there are people across the country who are on the job. Whether you're hospital staff or a first responder, a bus driver, excuse me. Whether you're hospital staff or a first responder, a bus driver, truck driver, or freight train operator, I know you're working harder than ever right now. So thank you. You're making a real difference for people who need you. I want you to know that we see that and we're standing behind you. Whatever our government can do to support you, to keep you safe, to protect our economy, we're doing everything we can to make it happen. And that includes for northern communities. We're working with partners to reduce travel to northern communities to help protect them from the virus. Today, the Northwest Territories will issue an order to limit non-essential travel into the territory. We support this important step. At the same time, we're focused on ensuring essential goods get to people in these communities. We will continue to work with partners and stakeholders on travel to the north. This past week, we also announced new measures to put more money in people's pockets to get through this uncertain time. This means everything from boosting the Canada Child Benefit to increasing the GST credit to giving people a break from paying back their student loans. We've unveiled a plan to mobilize industry to produce things like masks and ventilators. And to accelerate vital research, $25 million will go to teams across the country working on measures to detect, manage, and reduce the spread of COVID-19. For Canadians who are overseas, we're sending them texts with important information. We've announced new funding to help people borrow up to $5,000 to return to Canada or to cover their needs while waiting to come home. And public servants are working around the clock to help people who are stranded. On that last front, we've continued to make progress in the last few days. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce que notre gouvernement travaille avec des compagnies aériennes canadiennes pour rendre les vols commerciaux plus accessibles aux Canadiens coincés à l'étranger. Nous travaillerons aussi avec d'autres pays pour nous assurer que nos transporteurs aériens ont les permissions et les autres mesures logistiques nécessaires pour prendre les vols. Un premier vol d'Air Canada quittera le Maroc en fin de semaine. On travaille aussi avec d'autres compagnies aériennes pour conclure des ententes similaires. On planifie d'autres vols au cours des prochains jours, potentiellement du Pérou et de l'Espagne, avec d'autres pays qui seront annoncés le plus tôt possible. Plusieurs facteurs sont pris en compte lorsqu'on décide d'où partiront les vols. Par exemple, le nombre de Canadiens dans certains endroits, les fermetures de l'espace aérien ou la situation locale. On ne pourra pas joindre tout le monde, mais on fera tout ce qu'on peut pour aider le plus de gens possible. Pour que le gouvernement puisse contacter les gens qui ont besoin d'aide le plus rapidement possible, tous ceux qui sont à l'étranger doivent s'inscrire auprès d'Affaires mondiales Canada si ce n'est pas déjà fait. Vous pourriez le faire en ligne à voyage.gc.ca. Les mêmes politiques de santé publique qui, qui s'appliquent aux personnes qui entrent au pays s'appliqueront à ces vols. Tous les passagers à bord de ces vols devront s'isoler pendant 14 jours dès leur retour. Je tiens aussi à rappeler que si vous présentez des symptômes de la COVID-19, vous ne pourrez pas monter dans l'avion. Notre objectif, c'est de protéger votre santé et celle de vos proches. C'est donc primordial que tout le monde fasse sa part. Today, I can announce that we're working with Canadian Airlines to make commercial flights available for as many Canadians who are stranded as possible. We will also be working with other countries to ensure that our airlines have the permissions and other supports necessary to fly. The first flight is leaving Morocco this weekend and is being operated by Air Canada. We're currently working with other airlines on similar arrangements. And there will be more flights from other locations in the coming days. This potentially includes Peru and Spain. Other countries will be announced as soon as possible. As we make these decisions, factors like the number of Canadians there, airspace closures, and the local situation are being taken into account. Now, we won't be able to reach everyone, but we're going to do our best to help those we can. 
to make sure we can get information to people as quickly as possible. All Canadians overseas should register with Global Affairs Canada if they've not already done so. You can do this by going online to travel.gc.ca. The same public health policies will apply to these flights as to anyone else who's coming into the country. Everyone on these flights has to isolate for 14 days once they're back. I also want to remind everyone that if you're showing symptoms of COVID-19, you won't be able to board. This is about keeping all Canadians safe, so we need everyone to do their part. On that note, I want to recognize the airlines that are working with us to get travelers home and families reunited. I especially want to thank the staff, from pilots to air crews, for their professionalism and dedication. During a very difficult time for the industry, when people are worried about their jobs and futures, they're still stepping up to help. This has been a tough week for a lot of Canadians. People are concerned about their health and the economy. And today, on the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, let's not forget that people are worried about how fear can fuel racism, too. So let's be kind to each other. And let's stand up against discrimination wherever you see it. In the days and weeks ahead, as we continue to feel the impacts of this virus, it will be more important than ever to fight against fear, misinformation, and stigma. We must continue to pull together. Because in times of need, our strength is defined by how we care for each other, as neighbours, as communities, and as a country. Même pendant la fin de semaine, on doit tous faire notre part. Il faut continuer de suivre les recommandations émises par nos agences de santé publique et limiter au maximum les déplacements. Ça vous manquera peut-être de ne pas aller au restaurant avec la famille ou de ne pas aller voir un film avec des amis. Mais pour se protéger, on doit tous faire des ajustements. Et surtout, veiller les uns sur les autres. Parce que c'est ensemble qu'on va traverser cette période difficile. Merci tout le monde.